Welcome back guys to the new 2.5 million damage level 23 build that is not only dealing more damage than ever before on this level but will also make you completely invincible solving one of the biggest problems especially for new players. To become completely invincible on low level we have to use infinite battle cry because whenever battle cry is active you are completely invincible and you will never die no matter what happens. We will be able to engage in endless melee fights dealing all the damage from the Quarfu engraving and other powerful perks without ever fearing to get killed. To achieve that we have to use some new unique engravings we have never used before. First and foremost the battle cry duration increase has to be placed on our sword then we have to place the battle cry cooldown reset on our brain and we also use the fire damage duration increase on our torso. All this combined with the core for engraving and all the powerful abilities and perks will make us so powerful so early that we don't have to fear anything ever again. We will have infinite battle cry, over 50% crit chance and over 500% critical damage as early as on level 23. Level 23 is important because on level 23 we will actually unlock battle cry. With the increased duration battle cry will be active for up to 40 seconds making you completely invincible for the whole time and if it ever runs out you only have to make 2 kills to instantly reset this ability and activate it again. Which means that you are able to permanently use it. But before we check out the build, check out the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Dragonhair Silent Gods. If you are looking for a game for those cozy winter nights then click the link in the description and join your D&D legends in Dragonhair. Dragonhair Silent Gods is an open world RPG where you can fully customize your character, your perks and abilities. During your journey you will encounter unique decisions, dice roll actions, a lot of riddles, hundreds of epic and legendary characters, a beautiful fully themed open world and incredible boss fights. Over 10 million people have already downloaded and played this game since its launch. This game has a really stunning and cutting edge theme and it is topping the download charts in over 10 regions. Dragonhair Silent Gods is available on Windows, Mac, in the Steam and Epic game stores and of course it is also compatible with Android and iPhone. That means you can not only play at home, you can just carry it with you and play whenever you want to. And on November 17th Dragonhair Silent Gods has just introduced new iconic Dungeons and Dragon characters Drist to Urden and the powerful mighty demon Ertu. In this new update Drist and his Black Panther will get a completely new unique storyline. If you want to join your D&D legends in Dragonhair then click the link in the description and get all the new storyline and the new characters including some bonus packages entirely for free. The damage for this build is now twice as high as in the previous level 22 build because it is now much much easier to keep your battle cry, keep up your fire damage to deal all the massive damage which comes from all your powerful engravings. To get the highest possible damage before you enter a location just activate your fire damage, activate battle cry and then pull out your torch and put back your torch using the d-pad. That will make sure you activate the typhoon's axe damage even when you are out of combat. Under perfect conditions you can achieve up to 55,000 damage with a light attack, up to 80,000 damage with a heavy attack, over 200,000 damage with a charged heavy attack, over 80,000 damage with ring of chaos, up to 300,000 damage for furious bloodline and up to 700,000 damage for an overpower attack. Of course your range attacks will be also absolutely crazy with over 150,000 damage for a multi shot, over 250,000 damage for a devastating shot and over 300,000 damage for a predator shot. Of course your assassinations will also be absolutely powerful and more than enough to kill every living mercenary in the Greek world. And when attacking Polemarchs you can even get up to 2.5 million damage. But to achieve all this damage and get the most out of this build in terms of fun and damage you have to play it correctly. The Typhoon's Axe is an optional item for this build but if you want to use it to get the absolute highest damage you should definitely know that you can immediately activate the bonus damage by simply switching to your torch and back to your weapon. That way you can be sure that the 500% critical damage will always be active. If you want to be completely invincible with an endless chain of battle cry you have to make sure that you save one of your attacks especially Ring of Chaos for whenever this ability runs out. Because when you use Ring of Chaos it is incredibly easy to achieve the two needed kills to be able to immediately reset and activate battle cry again. If you save your ring of chaos for whenever battle cry runs out you can be completely invincible for the complete conquest battle. And with the extreme amount of damage you deal with this build it will be extremely fun to play them without ever fearing to get killed. You will never have to run away from your enemies during a conquest battle ever again. It is worth noting that it is also possible to kill civilians or animals to also reset this cooldown. 
And if you still feel the need to heal your character, you can also do that by pulling out your torch and switching back to your weapon. The same move that also activates the bonus damage from the Typhoon's Axe will also magically heal your entire character without having to use any healing ability. The torch healing only works with 25% health, but there is no reason with this build not to play with 25%. Of course, all this takes a bit of preparation and in order to get all the engravings needed for this build, you have to go to Corfu Island. The purple quest marker with the Great Escape quest will be be available once you've spoken to Stentor in Mega Reese. You can then simply fast travel back to the ship dock in Cephalonia and start the quest. Just ignore the warnings because Corfu Island will almost have no spoilers anyway. The only thing we have to do in Corfu Island is getting all the engravings needed. You should not play the quest except for the one that requires you to get your closings from the cave. Completing this removes the black wall and unlocks the whole island for you. For the first engraving we have to collect the captain and the cyclops ostraka from the bandit camp and the solution for that will be in Ali village in the pot. The champion Ostraka, which is the most important engraving that gives you the most damage, can be collected in the Collide farm and the solution for that is in the northeastern part of the map at the docks. We'll also get a third engraving for this build which is located in the Forgotten Ruins of Ikor and the solution for that is in the northwestern part of the map right at the Spartan Shield. This will unlock the flaming attack's duration increase. After you've collected everything, you can use your map menu and go to the Atlas page and fast travel back to Greece. You can go back and switch between Greece and Corfu Island and complete the quests whenever you want to. Something that is a bit more complicated to get is the armor penetration engraving. In order to do that, you have to go to the Message, the Stick and the Artist quest in Elis. This quest is only available if you first complete the Symposium in Athens, so make sure you already beat that. During this questline you have to collect clues from four different statues in Greece. The first one is located directly in Elis in the Zeus temple, the second one is located on Kytera island, the third one is located on a remote island in the eastern part of the map and the fourth statue is located on the marketplace on Tazos. Even though this is a high level quest, it doesn't require you to kill any enemies, so you don't have to be afraid of it. After you've collected all the four clues from all four statues, you will be ultimately sent to a fortress in Lemnos. In this fortress, you don't have to beat any of those enemies. Just whistle and lure the guards away to get into the room with those switches. Activate the switches in the correct order to get access to the secret room where you will find the Atlantean blade. The Atlantean blade will unlock the armor penetration engraving. When making a low level build it is also important that you get all the standard abilities which give you a big boost on your basic stats, so make sure you get all of them. A complete collection guide for all the other crit chance and crit damage engravings can be found at the end of the video. But now let's first check out the build. In the inventory we have over 8000 warrior damage, 6000 hunter damage and 45000 assassin damage. And of course we will also use the big bow. The big bow will add all its 555 DPS which it has on level 23 to your left melee weapon. So your left melee weapon gets amplified by a factor of 1.6 and this value of 8000 warrior damage will also be used when you shoot arrows. So the hunter damage value is basically not relevant anymore. For the left weapon of course we will use Hater's Harper. Hater's Harper is a perfect epic sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords. And here we will engrave the new increased battle cry of Aura's duration. This engraving greatly increases the duration and gives you invincibility for up to one minute. We will not use battle cry to increase our damage, we will actually use it to become invincible. The battle cry duration engraving is unlocked by the Titus Fury sword. And just like all the Tartarus weapon engravings, this engraving can only be engraved on the same weapon type, so we can only place it on another sword. To get Hater's Harper you have to play the Friend and Need quest in Attica, make sure you lie to Hater to keep the sword. If you don't have the Harper you can of course also use the Titus Fury, but it won't be as strong as the Harper. On the second weapon slot we'll use the Typhoon's Axe. The Typhoon's Axe has warrior damage, crit chance at full health and an insane 200% additional critical damage when you use flaming attacks. However, if you don't like to activate your flaming attacks every time, you can also just use the Sword of Axon as a replacement. The 100% damage but health kept to 25% can be found from an underwater location north of Terra Island. And the alternative Sword of Axon can be looted from a chest in the Parthenon in Athens. While the Sword of Axon is a good replacement, the maximum damage and the recommended version for this build should use the Typhoon's Axe. On the Beacon Bow we will engrave Armor Penetration. The Beacon Bow is the most important item in every build. It is a glitched item that doubles all your warrior damage for your left weapon. So you should make sure to always use this item and also play with your left weapon because only your left weapon will get the damage increase. However, if you only want to play as a hunter anyway, you could also go for the second side as a replacement. 
The second side bow has a 200% headshot damage engraving and you can find it in the pirate warehouse in Corfu Island. But the big gun bow is definitely the far better choice for your build. For the armor we will use an Nemean Lion set because an Nemean Lion set also has a set bonus that gives us an additional 10% crit chance and 50% critical damage at full health. Which is a really huge bonus especially early in the game. If you don't want to waste any resources on leveling up this set you should not buy this set before you reach level 21. Then all your engravings will be leveled up to the level which is shown here in the build. The Nemean Lion headgear has warrior damage, critical damage and if you solve the Ostra cards which are shown at the end of this video you can also engrave an additional 10% crit chance on it. The Bracers have warrior damage, critical damage while full health and here we engrave the cooldown duration for battle cry of Ares on ability kill. This engraving is also glitched because it doesn't give us 15% cooldown reduction it gives us 50% which means you only have to make 2 kills including random civilians to completely reset this ability. Together with the battle cry duration increase on your sword and with the instant reset by just making 2 kills you can literally be in a permanent state of battle cry without ever fearing to get killed by anything. On the belt we have another warrior damage, critical damage while full health and the 100% all damage from the champion Ostraka. The champion Ostraka can be found on Corfu Island, just go to the Kolaidi farm and collect the solution from the docks in the northeastern part of the map. For the torso we actually have multiple options. The first option is to use the 100% headshot damage engraving but the second option and in my opinion a much better one is the flaming attacks duration increase. The headshot damage engraving can be found from the bandit camp and the solution for that is in Aleos village on Corfu island. Flaming attacks duration increase can be collected from the forgotten ruins of Ikor and the solution for that will be in the northwestern part of the map right at the spartan shield. Again if you are more of a hunter player you should go for the headshot damage engraving but if you are more of a warrior player then definitely go for the flaming attacks duration increase. And last but not least on the boots we will go for another 50% critical damage while full health because crit chance is already engraved we can only go for the crit damage. This gives us a total stats of 416% warrior damage, we have 140% headshot damage, this can be 240% if you go for the 100% headshot on the torso or even 440% if you use the second side. We have a total of 47% crit chance at full health and 300% critical damage but if you activate your Typhoon's Axe by activating your Flaming Attacks ability, pulling out your torch and switching back to your weapon you will instantly get the 500% critical damage with the Typhoon's Axe. For the following abilities you will need at least 28 points that means you will get 22 points from leveling up and you should at least solve 6 additional tombs to get the additional 6 points. No matter if you play as a hunter or not it is always mandatory to get 6 cents. 6 cents will slow down your enemies when you are spotted which gives you enough time to still perform an assassination, hit them or kill them with your hunter abilities. The best hunter ability of course is the devastating shot but if you want to deal even more damage you can also go for the predator shot. Archery master is another mandatory ability because it gives you 40% additional headshot damage and it also always refills your first adrenaline segment. In the warrior tree we will go for the charged heavy attack which is really great together with swords, we will go for weapons master for an additional 40% warrior damage and 10% crit chance, we will put 1 point into flaming attacks to activate our flaming attacks and then go for 3 points into fire mastery to get over 40% additional fire damage. Your strongest ability is of course the overpower attack dealing 700,000 damage on normal enemies or even 2.4 million damage on polo marks but even better than that is battle cry. Battle cry is actually unlocked exactly at level 23 and it makes you completely invincible for the whole time when you use it. You won't use this for the damage at all since an additional 35% won't even matter at this point but the invincibility makes this ability incredibly great especially on lower levels. If you have the legacy add-on you can also use Furious the Bloodline. Furious the Bloodline deals around half the damage than an overpower attack but it also gives you back adrenaline which is really great when you use both of them in combination. I also kind of fell in love of the smaller version of Ring of Chaos. Even if Ring of Chaos is sometimes not lethal if it doesn't crit, you still have plenty of time to just make the two kills needed to reset your battle cry. And therefore it is really valuable to use it even early on before you have a level 3 Ring of Chaos. You don't need the healing ability because you can simply use a torch glitch to heal yourself, however you can still get it if you want to. Absolutely get Shadow Assassin for the additional 40% assassin damage and 50% critical damage which will of course also apply for Warrior and hunter abilities and don't forget to get rush assassination for your assassin abilities. You can of course modify this and get additional abilities but I think these are the most powerful and best ones to use. If you now need the perfect route to collect all the stuff that is required by this build then definitely use this route. 
you will start at Kefalonia with the Melisani Caves. There's a riddle, you can collect this tablet and the solution is at the statue in that bottomless lake. Then after that you will travel to Megaris and in Megaris there's another Ostraka location. The riddle is on the farm of Tripodiscos and the solution for that is at the ships at the dock, right at this spot. Don't forget to collect the ability point in the tomb of Alcatus when you are in Megaris and also don't forget to activate the fast travel point because I usually forget this one. After that fast travel to Delphi, activate the fast travel point of the temple of Apollo and then close by there's the tomb of the first Pythia. Also solve this tomb to get another ability point and then fast travel back to Megaris. Then you can simply go northward to activate the abandoned watchtower fast travel point and south of that watchtower is the tomb of Eteocles for another ability point. Then head all the way north to the Katmaya fast travel point in Thebes, collect the Ostraka from the leader house in Thebes, you have to sneak in there because there are high level enemies and then collect the solution here at the bridge near Thebes. That is a crit chance at full health Ostraka, so it is really important. After that you should visit that shipwreck for another Ostraka and the solution will be in the port of Pereiros or in the court, the smelling fish here on the shelf. While you are doing this you can also loot the Mycaean tomb of Ajax on the island of Salamis and then you should go to Corinthia, activate the fast travel point on the temple and then close by there's a sacred cave, there you will find another Ostraka riddle. The solution for that riddle is here on the tongue of that statue. Just go to that statue, press A on the tongue and you solve it. There's also another tomb close by which is Agamemnon's tomb. So if you need more points you can definitely get this and then go to the temple of Poseidon in Argolis. There's also Phidon's tomb, very easy to solve. Go to Elikia's peak then next and also do the waterfall of Styx for another ability point and then head all the way down to Olympia. Don't forget to activate the fast travel point on the temple of Zeus and then go to that waterfall, the spring of Piera. The Ostraka of that location is actually in the cave nearby and the solution will be on top of the hill north of Olympia. Go here to the left wing of that statue to solve it. There's also a very easy tomb nearby which is the smallest in the entire game. After you got that point, fast travel back to Elikia's peak and then you have to ride down with your horse all the way down to Laconia to Pydiscos camp. In Pydiscos camp there's another Ostraka riddle, get also the Targetos overlook and the riddle solution is at the top of Mount Targetos. Press A at the sword and you solve it. Then after that you can fast travel back to Azar Athens or to another island where you have a port because you will need your ship from now on. Sail with your ship to that location north of Terra. In that location you will find the Fox of Olympus in a chest underwater. Loot this weapon to get the 100% damage but health cap to 25%. After that go to Naxos. There's another Ostraka riddle in the Naxos quarry and the solution for that can be found on top of the arch of the unfinished temple near the beach. The next stop will be on Kios, so you have to travel all the way to the north with your ship to get to that ship dock here. There's the tomb very close nearby to that ship dock so I really encourage you to solve that tomb for another ability point and then you have to sneak in to the Anavatos ruin. Go to the back side of the ruin and only collect the Ostraka riddle. The solution for that can be found in Angelos cave here at the smashed ceramic pots in the middle of that cave. And last but not least we will travel to Lesbos. There's another Ostraka riddle, the last one we have to collect in the Alkidas fort. Also sneak in there because there are high level enemies so don't make any alert, just collect the riddle and then simply solve it by diving at the broken bridge. Now you finally collected all the 5 Ostrakas for crit chance at full health and for crit damage at full health. That's everything you basically need in this game. If you still need more ability points you can of course also go for the tomb of Orpheus or solve any of the other tombs. There are 22 in total in the base game and a lot of them were not close to that route. I really hope you like this new build, it's absolutely awesome. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.